Morning Buckners. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, June 5th, 2019. I am Dave Biddle, very happy joined by Bill Bank Green. Bank, uh, the camp season kicks off tomorrow, but uh, the big weekend, of course, is June 21st. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, looking at Ohio State's 2020 class, 10 commits so far, 8 on offense, 1 on defense, now 1 kicker, of course. Um, uh, you know, the, the million dollar question when are they going to start getting some defensive recruits in this class, and who might they be, Bank? Yeah, the thing I would say is, you in conjunction with the camp starting, you know, now that's important. But more camp is more for almost laying the groundwork for 2021. And of course, now Thursday is going to be good because the two tight ends are going to be there, Luke Lachey and Joe Royer, and one of them is going to be in this class for Ohio State. I think it's going to be Lachey, but I wouldn't count out Royer. Um, He's really good. So that's going to be a nice head-to-head thing to watch. Um, I wouldn't really expect any, in terms of getting a commitment or anything, I'm not sure, you know, I see any commitment coming this week. That weekend that you talked about, the June 21st, that is, you know, the way I would compare things to kind of dumb it down for people like me and, of course, not you, but would be, I would say, like, right now, they have done their preparation. Okay, they have an amazing group coming in here the weekend of the 21st. I would say right now they have the bases loaded and there's nobody out. So are they going to hit a ground ball to the shortstop for a double play and come out of this with one run? Or are they going to have a big inning and score six or seven runs? That That's really where they are right now. They got the bases loaded. There's nobody out. And we got to see if they come out of this with one run or if they score seven or eight. So, I, I really think they're set up, you know, to pull some big time recruits here. Now these guys probably will not commit on their visits. Some of them have visits remaining, but I think the people you look at would be Darian Henry, um, Kedrick Bingley Jones on the D line, Court Williams, Mitchell Melton, um, Macari Page, Clark Phillips. Uh, what do they do with Ricky Hyatt, the in-state kid? So there are a lot of guys. They got ducks on the pond right now, and they just, you know, time to knock them in. I like it. Let's see if we can hit a mm-hmm. grand slam home run here. Um, you know, and, and talk more about the 21st, uh, that big camp weekend, as you mentioned, might be more for 2021 kids. But uh, just uh, tell me more about the, the camp on June 21st and why that's so big for the Buckeyes. Well, they've got a lot of official visitors coming in that weekend, and they're bringing in a lot of younger kids too. So they're really – You know, and and I know there's a school of thought that you're bringing in too darn many guys on one weekend, and how are you going to spend individual time with each kid? And and I think that's a legit, you know, point of contention. But, you know, when I look at Mark Pantone, he's the organizer of, of that weekend. That would be him advising Ryan Day of how he thinks they should go. And Mark has been through this a million times. So, rather than looking at it like, hey, you got a rookie head coach who might be kind of screwing this up here, I would look at it like you have a veteran personnel director who knows what the heck he's doing. So there are going to be a ton of kids on campus that weekend, both official visitors that they're trying to land for 2020, and then a bunch of young kids they're bringing in just to kind of get into the vibe, the flow, uh, feel the juice, feel the mojo. So that's going to be an exciting weekend. I mean, it's, you know, I don't, when the NCAA went last year to these summer official visits, they used to not start till September one. So you could never have something like this in the summer. And it was interesting to see how the schools were going to play these summer visits. And Ohio state clearly made the decision that they're bringing everybody they can get in the weekend of the 21st, official, unofficial, whatever. And it is going to be a star-studded group there. And I I think the hope is that they all feed off each other and get some sort of momentum and some sort of vibe going, you know, positively for Ohio State. You know, Ryan Day's hoping, though, the weather is very nice that weekend here in Columbus, Ohio, Um, putting all his eggs in the the weekend of the 21st. Um, You know, when you you mentioned um, Darian Henry earlier, I want you to talk more about him. And also, I find the Jaheim Thomas situation interesting. Obviously, they're all, you know, Jaheim Thomas, Paris Johnson, Darian Henry now, all teammates at Cincinnati Princeton after Paris Johnson transferred there from Cincinnati St. X. But Jaheim Thomas Banks saying that Ohio State's not in his list of finalists. Is that just him kind of pouting that 
Ohio State wanted him to come to camp, and the offer wasn't committable. What, what do you make of the whole Jaheim Thomas situation? Well, first off, he's a really good kid, okay? Great family, great parents. He's a good kid. Um, and I can't speak for him, but I've been through this, you know, it's not my first rodeo, and I think his feeling is I've got offers from all these schools. Why do I have to camp to get your offer? You know what I mean? I, I'll be fine without you. You'll be fine without me. So is there a little bit of pouting there? Could be. Could be. But, you know, that's what that's what life's all about. I mean, so I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think Ohio State – I think that whole thing got off to a bad start because I think they felt like they got wedged a little bit into being forced to offer Jaheim when it looked like, you know, Paris and Darien, they're going to go elsewhere and they're a trio and we better offer him. But if you offer him and it's not a real offer, I mean, it's just phony baloney bull crap anyway. I mean, I don't know. I think it put the relationship on a bad, bad start. And I don't think Ohio State is really sold on him. If they were, they'd be beating his door down to get him. And I don't think he's all that kept up on them. You know, he's taking visits everywhere. So I think it's one of those things where we, we shake hands, we part friends and, Ohio State gets Darian Henry and Paris Johnson, and the Princeton trio becomes a Princeton duo, and everybody everybody's happy. I was going to ask, you don't think this affects the Paris Johnson and Darian Henry situation at None. all? None. None. This whole package deal and recruiting, I mean, it, it's it's just not that way. These guys aren't married to each other. You know, they're friends. But, uh, you know, you have friends too, but you're not leaving your job to go work with your buddy. It just doesn't work that way. Does it help that, you know, people know each other in the class? Sure, you take every advantage you can get. But at the end of the day, the position coach has to recruit his players, okay? You you don't need, you know, if you need a, a recruit to recruit other recruits, then the recruit should be on staff and he should be a player coach. So I don't put much stock in all that, you know, package deal stuff. These guys have to go where it's best for them, okay? And nobody is going to go to a school where they don't really like the head coach, they don't like the position coach, they don't like the position they're going to put them at, but, hey, I'm with that guy I sat next to in science class for four years. That ain't going to happen. So it's way overrated in recruiting the whole package deal thing. It's good news for the Buckeyes. Um, last thing, I know a lot of fans are – asking a lot of questions about the defensive coaches and not, not about their defensive coaching acumen, but about their recruiting. What are you hearing? Just, you know, as you said, the bases are loaded. Nobody's out for defensive recruits. What are you hearing uh, about these defensive coaches from everybody, you know, are you hearing good things about Ohio State's defensive coaches on the recruiting front? Well, you know, I just look at, you know, track records and, and Matt Barnes is a guy I know nothing about. So anything I would say, on Matt Barnes would be a fabrication and something I just made up. So I'm going to pull him out of this equation. I don't know Matt Barnes. I don't know anything about him. Greg Madison has a great reputation over the years, not only as a great coach, but he's been a great recruiter. Um, So Madison, I look at track record. It's really good. Al Washington is a young up and coming guy. You know, so Al has done good things in the past. He has a great reputation. If you meet him, you're going to instantly like the guy. Um, No reason why he's not a good recruiter. Jeff Halfley has got a ton of kids, you know, visiting. He's got guys on the line that are studs, you know, Clark Phillips, Lathan Ransom. These guys are big time. So give him a chance here. And like I say, I, I, I still think it's early, but it's only going to be early for a couple more weeks. And then it starts, we get into the midway point. I think it's way too early to panic now. I don't think it's too early to start panicking when you get into, you know, two a day start and fall camp comes. It's starting to get serious by then. So let's let them get through this big inning they got coming up on the 21st. And let's see how they do when they come out of that. Um, I think the defensive commits are coming. And when I do my best guest list every week, I've got guys like Darian Henring and Kendrick Binley Jones and Court Williams and Mitchell Melton. I put a crystal ball pick in for Clark Phillips. I think they have a shot at Lathan Ransom. These are, you know, these are things that are going to put smiles on people's faces when they happen and if they happen. 
Great stuff as always from Bill Ben Green. Um, real quick programming note out there, just so everybody knows, uh, Ryan Day and the four coordinators will be made available for interviews today at noon, so Bucknuts will have wall-to-wall coverage of that. So Ryan Day, um, obviously Mike Yersich and Kevin Wilson and Greg Madison and Jeff Halfley. We're going to get all five of those men, so keep it locked to Bucknuts for all of that. Thank you very much to Bill Bank Green. Really appreciate it, Bank, and thanks to our listeners out there for tuning in to the show. I appreciate that as well. Hope everyone has a great day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Bye.